All right. So everyone, um, how many papers are there in SPM 2020 English? Four SPM 2020 English. Three papers, including oral tests. Excellent. So since I have mentioned that we are going to cover directed writing, which paper is directed writing in? Directed writing ni dalam kertas berapa? Paper one. Okay, excellent. And how many questions are there in paper one? Dalam kertas satu, you ada berapa soalan? Ada berapa soalan dalam kertas satu? How many questions are there in paper one? 15. We have two questions. Very good. Basically, paper one and paper two. Um, directed writing and then directed writing is paper one ke paper two? Which paper is direct writing? Mana lah tahu tahun ni tiba-tiba tak ada SPM kan because of COVID-19. Do you know that IGCSE is cancelled? IGCSE, IGCSE or O level is supposed to be held in um, May until June but it is cancelled and it will be done only internally. Internally means that um, the school teacher will be assessing their own students. So what we don't know because of this COVID-19 pandemic, we are not sure of the status of your SPM exam, right? No, I mean, mana tahu um, SPM ni dikendalikan uh, secara berbeza ke, makin susah ke, we don't know, but yeah. Apply you guna the result PT3, um, maybe, but yeah, you have studied um, in upper secondary for one and one, almost one and a half year right now. So it's a waste if you, if there is no SPM. But anyway, let us go through your SPM um, overview, your, your SPM paper overview. Hang on, let me turn on the chat so I can see what you type because as usual, adult students like you don't want to turn on the camera, don't want to turn on the microphone, unlike my UPSR students who are all very friendly. Okay, now look at the um, screen right now. I hope you can see the slideshow. Are you able to see the slideshow? Okay, so this is your SPM paper one structure. We have paper one, directed writing, and paper two, continuous writing. What is the difference between directed writing and continuous writing? Dua, dua pun writing, tapi apa beza? Kenapa ada sampai dua writing? Anyone, anyone, if you want quicker answer. Okay, Mark, very good. Um, another, other, other differences? Apa lagi perbezaan dia? Format? Yang mana yang karangan berformat? Is it question one or question two? Question one, yes. Question one is formatted writing. Yep, directed writing um, contributes to 35 marks. Yep, directed writing also provide, uh, you are also provided with some information um, regarding the question in directed writing and continuous writing will contribute 50 marks for you. Basically, uh, those are some of the most striking differences. But um, what is important is that the what you are assessed are different in directed writing and continuous writing. Very good, um, Sarvina. Yep. Uh, for continuous writing, you are you are assessed um, on your creativity, on your flow of ideas. Unlike directed writing, they the the examiners want to see how you how you put all the information into writing and based on the format given. Okay, let us focus on directed writing alone. How many paper, uh, sorry, how many type of questions or types of essays, types of format are there in directed writing? How many and what are they? Apakah jenis-jenis karangan berformat di dalam question one? Okay, five, very good. Susar, name them. Apa dia karangan-karangan berformat in paper one? Uh, question one, paper one. and the differences study. We have article, very good. Faris, Daniel, article, informal letter, report, letter. Letter is divided into um, two, informal and formal. Report, okay, uh, one article, informal letter, report, some more. 
speech and one more what is the last one i repeat article informal letter this is based on what you write article informal letter report speech one more because you said there are five apakah lagi satu article informal letter report speech and lambatlah formal letter and that is what we are going to do today formal letter formal letter ni sebenarnya karangan yang paling uh, i would say the simplest in terms of the points but it's a bit complicated when it comes to the format because all together there are 13 for uh, sorry 11 format which you have to write for um formal letter Okay, so these are the uh, information about question one and question two, which I know you already have this um, at the back of your head. Okay, jadi inilah lima jenis karangan yang saya katakan tadi. We have informal letter. We have informal letter, formal letter, article, report, speech or talk. And today we are going to cover formal letter ataupun surat kiriman rasmi. Basically, formal letter ni, I think the format is um, almost the same with your formal letter uh, surat kiriman rasmi in bahasa Melayu, right? Okay, ini kita dah tak payah pergi dah. Alright. So, that is um, on the general overview of the paper. Now, let us go through um, the into more, let us go through more detail about our formal letter. Before that, do you have any question? Ada apa-apa nak tanya ke? Alamak, where is the chat? I lost I lost you. Okay. Any question so far? No? Okay, let us go through. Yeah, I hope you have your pen and paper eh, sebab kita nak buat formal letter hari ini together. Alright. So, uh, ni kita abaikan. There are um, five most common types of formal letter. Sepatutnya ni saya nak tanya tapi dia dah terbuka slide dulu. So dia tak jadi soalan. Number one, letter of application. Can you give an example of letter of application? What kind of application um, do you write? Letter of application in bahasa Melayu is surat permohonan. Yes, job application. Very good, chunky. Some more, what other application do you think would come out in your SPM? Because you know that um, a formal letter hasn't come out in SPM for more than seven years already. So there is a probability that it might come out this year. Okay, I forgot to show you the, what to say, the, 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 the um, exam. <sighs> How to say the past year, past year, paper, past year questions. Okay, application for MC. Nak minta cuti pun boleh. So we have two. Apa lagi application yang you nak minta? It's not really cover letter. Cover letter is surat iringan. Contohnya, if you want to apply for, if you want to request anything, you want to apply for a job, you put your um, application letter. Yeah, it's like a cover letter, but not necessarily a cover letter. What else? What What else do you apply? Apa lagi yang you pohon? Selain kerja, selain cuti. Remember, you are all SPM candidates. And after, yes, university, scholarship, excellent. I love this answer. So after you finish SPM and you get good results, inshallah, all A's for everyone. Foo, foo, foo. Um, mm -hmm. So after you get all A's, you need to apply for scholarship. So you might um, need to write an application letter um, for, the, for the scholarship. Okay, next, letter of request. We have letter of request here. What kind of request would you be making? Apa lagi request yang you akan minta? And what's the difference between request and also application? Application, memohon. Request pun macam meminta, memohon. Yes, request for a visit. Contohnya, you are from uh, the Environment Club of SMK Batu Lintang, Sarawak. And you need to um, plan for a visit to a... Uh, biscuit factory. So you need to write a letter of request or a permission to the um, factory manager probably to ask for. Um, wow, from, from Prime Minister Sarah, what do you want to request from the Prime Minister? More scholarships? More bantuan um, Saradiri? 
Okay, so that is one of the example. Sambil belajar ke zoo, betul. So, letter of request ni, contohnya surat, surat minta kebenaran. That is the most, um, the most common one, common request that uh, would usually come out in exam. Okay, next. Um, letter of resignation. This is pronounced as resignation. Bukannya resignation eh. Make sure your pronunciation is correct. Resignation. So, um, how, why do you need to resign as a staff? Very good. Uh, yes, Susar, if you want to ask something, just type it. Oh, you want more internet? You, you mean more internet connection, Afik? Okay, that would fall under letter of request. Yep. Um, for example, if you are doing a part-time a part-time job uh, during the school break and when the school break ends, you need to tender your resignation. So you issue a letter of resignation. Unusual environment working. Unusual working environment. Yet, yeah. when you want to work in another place, so you tender your resignation. You bagi, uh, apa that resignation dalam bahasa Melayu? Berhenti kerja kan? Surat berhenti kerja. So basically in your in all these letters, you must state your purpose or reasons why you, you want to resign, why you want to request, why you want to apply. And next we have letter of complaint here. What do you usually complain about? You can remaja kan? You can suka complain. Okay, very good Amirul. The T school canteen. So kalau sekolah canteen kotor ni, you hantar surat uh, complaint kepada siapa? Pollution nearby our house, poor condition of canteen, toilet. So all of this, whom do you send the teacher, uh, the teacher, brother, the letter to? To pengetua, excellent, to the prime minister, and eh, prime minister, sorry, to the principal, some more. Kalau um, about pollution nearby our house, whom do you send the letter to? About bully, excellent, Uchita Itachi. To the government, okay, Faris, you nak hantar letter of complaint to the government about? Okay, contohlah, you want to complain about um, about um, a pothole. A pothole, um, tahu kan pothole, what's a pothole? What's a pothole? Pothole ni jalan berlubang-lubang tu kan? Okay, so for example, uh, jalan raya dekat rumah you, ada potholes, ada jalan lubang. Logically speaking, Whom do you send your letter of complaint to? You tulis surat uh, aduan, letter of complaint is surat aduan kepada siapa? Okay, pihak berwajib ni siapa? MPSP. Wakil rakyat, Wakil rakyat pun boleh ataupun um, in bahasa Melayu kita panggil PBT. PBT is pihak berkuasa tempatan or in English we call local council. Local council tu, it depends lah dekat your district. Contohnya, uh, I'm in Shah Alam right now. I would send it to MBSA. Those in KL would send it to um, DBKL. Town council, very good. Local council or town council. If you are in Penang, you uh, you would most probably send it to MPP, is it? Majlis Perbandaran MPPP. Majlis Perbandaran Pulau Pinang. And it depends on where you stay at. Alright? MPBJ, MPJBT. Yep. All of this. Okay, and last one, we have letter of acknowledgement. When do we write letter of acknowledgement? For payment of what? Be more specific. Formally acknowledge the receipt. Yes, when you receive something, you receive um, a payment from, from, from your um, customer and then you, you attach together a letter of acknowledge, uh, acknowledgement saying that you have received the the payment or the parcel or anything anything that you receive uh, you acknowledge okay besides receiving things selain menerima benda bila lagi you uh, menulis surat letter of acknowledgement when else bill invoice still on payment other other instances ada lagi tak situasi lain di mana kita menulis letter of acknowledgement yes as a courtesy very good uh, maintenance of what sarah 
Letter of acknowledgement, for example, when you acknowledge someone is being promoted, when you acknowledge that um, you acknowledge something, you menerima, you menerima sesuatu lah. Okay, one example is 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 that you acknowledge the uh, yep like pangkat promotion or you 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 acknowledge that um you have a new boss ke or anything yang you kena you kena terima maklum okay ambil maklum all right so these are the five types today we are going to cover only two types what do you think we are going to cover yang the most popular the most popular two which one complain very good Another one is application. But what you are going to write is the letter of complaint. Okay, let's look at this letter. Okay, eh, ada nama saya pula. Okay, um, this is based on this only. What type of formal letter do you think this is? You rasa ini jenis surat kiriman rasmi jenis yang mana? Complain, you sure? Look properly. Application, excellent Faris. Um, Sustar and Sarah. Jadi, kita go through the format, boleh tak? We have, how many formats do you think there is? What is the first format that you see here? Kita label kan? Okay, let's label the format together. What's the first format that you see from top to bottom? This is, kalau you tengok the tajuk, layout of formal letter, the top one. Bahagian atas ya. Nope, not address. Belum, not address yet. Apa lagi? Sebelum address, first. Nama pemberi ataupun the sender's name. Nama penulis surat. Okay. And then only followed by your address. Whose address? Whose address? Sender address. Yep, the sender's address. It's very difficult to write on screen, so pardon my um, handwriting. My handwriting is not usually this ugly, all right? It's usually pretty neat. Okay, after the sender's address, kena tulis apa, uh, apa pula format ketiga selepas sender's address? A line. Yes, this horizontal line, excellent. This line. Okay. Next, after the line, dah tiga dah, baru, baru sikit Receiver. je dah tiga. Sorry? Receiver. Yep, the receiver. The receiver's name or position. If you know the name, you write down the name. But if you don't know the name, you just write down the um, position. Principal, kalau you hantar tadi dekat local council or town council, who would who would be what would be the um, position that would receive your letter? Sir. No 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 no. Jawatan dia. Okay, what's sir. the jawatan? Sir is sir should be here. But when you write it, what oh, is the position? Sorry. Ha, apa dia? Apa jawatan? Contohnya dekat Majlis Perbandaran Ampang Jaya. Who who holds the highest the topmost position? The head. The head of. No no no. Apa dia? The, uh, it starts from letter C. Chairman. Chairman, excellent. So normally it always goes to chairman. Kalau lah you not complain to a restaurant who served you very poorly, who should receive the letter? The owner of the restaurant. But normally, takkan you nak tulis main panjangan to the owner of the restaurant. What do you write for a restaurant or a business? It starts from M. Management. Manager. The manager, yep. So, kalau local council just now, you write um, chairman. But if you write to businesses, especially restaurants, if you want to make a complaint about the service that you receive, you write the letter to the manager of the, um, the, the, the restaurant, okay? And then, bawah the receiver's name or address uh, or, or, or um, position now, you have the Receiver. Receiver address. Address. Receiver address. address. Make sure the format are all correct. Yeah? So, kita ada nama jalan and then you have your postcode. Uh, made up postcode pun boleh. Tak semestinya, alamat ni tak semestinya logic. I'm not sure if jalan kayu, taman batu, all this exist. 
Okay, even this, you you look here, even this postcode ni, postcode ni is not KL postcode. Jadi, it doesn't matter. Don't don't give too much thoughts on the alamat. As long as it's there and the format is correct. Okay, and then you need to underline the last line of the address. What else? Date. The date. Where do date. you write the date? On your right hand corner. Um, together with the last line. Par in parallel with the uh, last line. Same line of the is the postcode. Sorry? Are the yep. same line with the postcode? Yep, yep. Uh, the postcode and the state. So here we have the the po the format. Um, uh, some students would ask, um, should they write the month here in all capital letter? Actually, it doesn't matter as long as you spell it uh, in full. Okay, I usually How about I would, after we state a full stop uh after the date after the date as long as the date is there no need to full stop no need to full, uh, I don't I didn't write any full stop here you oh sorry okay thank because you. it's not a it's not a full sentence okay teacher I have a question yep who's who's that okay um Shavina okay is is a receiver's address must be logic. No. Oh, receivers as well, so never mind. But it must be logic in the sense that, for example, um, the question asks you to write about uh, your complaint to... Okay, Bagi, what, what do you complain about? Contohnya, your complaint about... Uh, give me some idea. What? Um. Your complaint about... Okay, your school canteen just now. Contoh, okay, yeah. Yes, School canteen, okay. So logically speaking, when you write a complaint about your school canteen, especially for those who don't go to asrama, your address must be in the same taman with your school canteen lah. Janganlah, you punya alamat dekat Kuantan. But then your school, uh, sekolah biasa pula tu dekat Pulau Pinang. So that one is quite illogical. Uh, okay. But the, 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 the name of the street, the name of the taman can all be made up. Okay? okay, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be real. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then we have the salutation here, like Sutta mentioned. If you know the, the, the gender of the receiver, you just write sir or madam. So, contohnya, you dah tahu dah penerima you lelaki, you just write dear sir. But if you, don't, if you don't know the gender, you write like how I did here. Dear sir slash madam. Okay? Okay, next, you write down the... Title of the letter. The title is very straightforward. You terus bagi tahu niat you. Application for the post of mathematics teacher. So this is an application letter um, for the position of mathematics teacher at Pusat Tuition Prima. Any questions so far? Kita dah habis format untuk okay. bahagian atas surat rasmi. No. No. Oh, before that, kita lupa lah nak bincang. Um, just now you said that surat rasmi here. Uh, bukan surat rasmi lah. Uh, directed writing contributes 35 marks, right? Okay, what is the breakdown of the marking? Apakah pecahan markahnya? Format, language. Mm -hmm. Format. Grammar. Language. Gram uh, grammar, grammar falls under language. And points or content. So what's the breakdown? 35 ni. How do you divide further into these three? How many marks for content? How many marks for language? And how many marks for format? Format three. Format three, excellent. Content twelve. Content twelve and language. The biggest contributor is twenty. Okay. Jadi by right for directed writing, you should get fifty. 15 marks, ni dah dalam tangan dah. As long as you write all 12 points, semua 12 points ni memang akan diberikan. Like you mentioned earlier kan, formatted writing, directed writing ni um, is the question when you, you all the points are given to you, right? So if you count properly, all the points given are 12. As long as you put all the 12 points in your directed writing, regardless of the your language, you will get 12 marks. Plus, if you write all format correctly, you will get 3 marks. Jadi dah 15 tangan, 15 tangan. 15 markah guaranteed. 
And then it goes down to your 20 baki 20 markah ni untuk you score for your language, vocabulary, sentence structure, okay, and so on. Understand? Jadi, you tak boleh rugi lah for directed writing because like I said, 15 marks should be guaranteed for you. As long as you write everything correctly. Understand? Okay. How about uh, when we miss uh, the contents given? You will lose um, marks according to how many contents do you lose. For example, if you miss two marks, uh, you you miss two content, then you will get only ten marks. Uh, even if you, one. Even one. Yep. Because there will only be twelve points given. You must read the instructions carefully because um, some 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 questions will only provide ten points, and there will be additional instructions for you where they would say add another two points or add another two reasons to your letter uh, then only you have how to read your question we don't time. how about when we don't know uh, we don't know we don't understand about this content given and how mm -hmm. we want to use it meaning that you don't understand the points so you don't yes, know how so to put it into i would suggest that you just write um simple sentences like in addition you just put down the point. As long as it's there, then it depends on the discretion of ataupun budi bicara of the examiner to either include or give you marks on that or not. As long as you write oh, it in your you. format. Okay? Is there Tulis a minimum you. spelling mistakes means? Mm, minimum spelling mistakes? Yeah. They will cut our, they will reduce our marks or what? Yes. Um. The, the way they mark your paper is when they... That would actually, um, this is how they mark question two actually, but we'll just discuss it here. You know, question two, there is no marks for content at all. So what they will do is they will read through um, your, your, your um, essay ones and they will immediately categorize your essays into A, B, C, D and fail. So A essays will have very 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 minimum um, language mistakes very minimum grammar errors very minimum um, very minimum spelling errors sentence structure errors and so on so that would depend there there is no specific number of mistakes um, given to the examiners to determine if your essay should belong in a b c or d uh, even oh, yeah. if your even if your essay uh, has no grammar or language mistakes at all but when you write your essay it sounds like a standard one essay you might not also get an a essay okay mm. because one of the category one of the criteria of an a essay is to have um, a variety type of sentences you must have compound complex sentences you can add the passive voice active voice and so on so if you have all these variety sentences you will fulfill the criteria for variety type of sentences Understand? Okay, thank you. Okay. So this is the middle part of the letter. Do we, do we want to read this? Tapi kita tengok sikit-sikit je lah, tak payahlah specifically baca eh. Um, this is the first paragraph. Ni dah middle part of the letter, okay? Just now we did the top part of the letter. This is the middle part of the letter. So this is how you write the first paragraph. If you see, there is no numbering. Tak ada number. Numbering start from number two here. And followed by three, four until the end of your letter. And um, what should be in your first paragraph is, um, you may write sentences like this, and what's important is you write the purpose of you writing the letter. You tekankan semula tujuan you menulis surat. Faham ya? And then the rest ni you bagi lah sebab kenapa yang you uh, apply. Tengok ni you dapat AA ones. Uh, ni zaman saya punya SPM lah. I don't. I in my time there was no A plus, A minus, A. It was A one, A two, B three, B four, C five, C six. Okay. So um, these are the results. So uh, you give you give your own reasons. You give you justify why they should um, admit you as their staff. Okay, yang ni kita go through laju je. And then, this is the bottom part of your letter. Okay. You can thank the receiver here or you can thank in the last paragraph. And then, what do we call this? Yours faithfully here. A complimentary closure. Complimentary 
closure. The most common error that students make is they, they usually forget this letter S here. Lepas tu, dia selalu lupa comma. Okay, it's always yours faithfully. Nak selamat untuk formal letter, always use yours faithfully. And then, you have your signature here. Ah, uh, Yang ni, you nak gariskan pun boleh. And then, you write your name. Okay, if you are representing uh, an organization or a company, you may also write your position. For example, if you are a secretary of um, Kelab Bahasa Inggeris, you write down your position and the organization name. Uh, English Language Society. I'm sorry, I need to cough. Okay, are you all clear on this? Eh, yeah. hello? Okay, eh, I forgot to see your chat. Okay, no one is typing anything. So, are we ready to write our letter right now? Okay. Yeah. This is the letter we are going to write. Come on, this is the question. Um, you are the resident. Dia dah bagi dah. You siapa? Look at what I underline. You are the resident of Bandar Seri Setia. But they did not mention Bandar Seri Setia ni dekat negeri mana. So, you can make up lah. Okay, it could be in Sabah, in Sarawak, in Melaka. Being a concerned resident, you have noticed the rapid development that has taken place. Ada pembangunan yang berlaku dekat kawasan um, perumahan anda. Using, using the advantages and disadvantages in the map below, write a letter to the town council. What is town council again? Majlis Perban Daran, yeah. okay? Jadi, uh, are you representing any organization in this letter, in this question? No. No, you are just a resident. So, that means you don't have any position, okay? Um, when you introduce yourself, you can just introduce yourself as the resident. <coughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Can you give me one minute? I need to take my drink. Yeah, sure. <coughs> <clears throat> so sorry. Okay, let us continue. Here, in this um, chart here, or in this diagram, could you count for me how many points are given? Are the proper point and the Six. I mean, count correctly. Oh, oh, these points are wait. Eleven. 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 Let me count. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Only lah. Where come? Where got eleven? <laughs> okay. Jadi maksudnya tadi markah untuk konten ada berapa? Saya cakap. Twelve. 12. 12. Where do you get? Okay, since there are only 10 points given, where hmm? do the other two points come from? Mana you nak cari lagi dua markah untuk content sedangkan content yang diberikan hanya? Our own two ways. Yes, look at the uh, additional instruction. Suggest two other ways to improve the situation in the area. So this is what? The examiner will be looking for in your essay later. They will look for all these 10 points given up here, semua ni. Kemudian, dia juga akan uh, cari lagi dua suggestions. Eh. Dia suruh minta cadangan untuk menambah baik situasi di kawasan itu. Jadi, uh, if you have all these 12, you will get 12 marks. Okay. And then, when writing your letter, you must lay out your letter correctly. You have your addresses. Salutations, use all points given. Okay, so um, bawah ni dia ada additional points. For your letter, you will receive up to 15 marks for the format and content points and up to 20 marks for the quality of your writing. Okay, are we ready to write our letter now? Okay, regardless you are ready or not, we are going to write our letter anyway. Sebenarnya letter ni dah ada, so kita tunjuk je lah. You are going to do another letter later. Okay, I'll just show you the example of the letter here. 
Hang on, how do I change what I share here? Okay, here is it. Where is it? Where is it? Mm, okay, here. Nampak tak? Nampak screen tak? Yeah. Nampak. Yeah, okay. This is the full letter. Yeah, nampak. Nampak eh? Sekejap eh? Kita ada format. Kita tak payah go through format lah ya sebab format nampak. tadi kita dah go through. Sekarang, what I want you to do is um, I want you to find Eh tapi macam mana you nak nampak points yang dia bagi kalau macam tu saya kecilkan yang ni. Sekejap saya stop share. Sekejap ya. I want you to, what I want you to do is to identify, you cari the two additional points um, which is written in the letter to complete all the 12 points given. Let me rearrange my 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 window first. Sekejap ya. If you have any question, just shoot now while I rearrange this. Kejap ya, give me some time. Okay, I'm sharing my wall with you now. Okay, I hope you can see everything. You can see the letter on your left and the question on your right. Can you? Boleh nampak kan? My instruction was to find the additional can, can. two ways to improve the situation. You can, bagi tahu dekat nombor berapa. Okay, Uchita. Uchiha. Okay, cari dua point tambahan on how to improve the situation in the area. In which paragraph is are the two additional points? The fifth number. Number, fi num number five. Are the two additional points together in the same paragraph? Um, Yep. Okay. So let us read um, the fifth paragraph, right? Do I read or does anyone want to volunteer to read? So that it wouldn't be me talking all alone. I don't know. Volunteer ke? Nak baca? Marilah volunteer. Kalau tak ada saya sebut nama nak. Uchiha Itachi from Penang. Can you please read paragraph five, number five? Hilang dah. Um, paragraph 5. Yep, number 5. Stewart, you want to read? Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Therefore, I would like to personally suggest the better traffic management system to be implemented around the construction areas in order to reduce congestion and accidents. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the developer must only be allowed to work during office hours to avoid noises at night and on the weekends. Okay, excellent. So the two suggestions are, the first one would be um, better traffic management system here. Okay. And the other one is to um, to only allow to uh, work during office hour to avoid noises at night. Okay, so these are the two additional points which would add marks to your content. Understand? Okay, this is um, how um, the writer addressed the local council just now. You see, Chairman Majlis Perbandaran Seri Setia since the author or the writer stays in Selangor, she assumes that Bandar Seri Setia is in Selangor. So, Majlis Perbandaran Seri Setia must also be in Selangor. This is what I called um, logical address just now. Janganlah you tulis surat a resident of Bandar Seri Setia in Johor Bahru, but then the Majlis Perbandaran Seri Setia is in um, Gua Musang, Kelantan. That is very illogical. Okay? And that is followed by the salutation, the title, and the um, first paragraph. 
Okay, the way she writes the first paragraph is very straightforward and simple. The above matter is kindly being referred to. And then in the second paragraph, she explains the, um, the, the how to say, the, the problems, the problems that she faced uh, in, in Bandasri City and so on. Okay, and she ends the letter with a thank you, a complimentary closure just now, her signature, her name, um, this is not necessary, but if you write, it won't, your marks won't be deducted. So she writes her position as the resident of Bandar Seri Setia. But if she writes her name only like this, pun tak, tak apa. Okay, markah pun tidak ditolak sebab she does not represent any, um, she does not represent any organization. Okay, are you all clear on this? Alamak, we have a few minutes more. It's okay. Let us write an actual letter. Kejap. I will open the question now. Okay, this is what we are going to do. Hang on. Okay, let me read the question to you. I hope you can see the screen. You are not satisfied with the conditions in your neighborhood. You would like the district council to take immediate action. Like, 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 write a letter of complaint to the district officer to express your dissatisfaction regarding this matter. You should include the following points in your letter. How many points are there? Rubbish dump along the roadside, playground not maintained. Um, six. six, but okay. So we have potholes, we have stray cats and dogs, we have clog and smelly drains. Ada tak perkataan tak faham? If you have, uh, if any of these words you don't understand, just, um, just not, just let me know, okay? But when writing your letter, you should remember to include all the points given and elaborate all the points given. Meaning that all the points given here must be elaborated, then only you will get 12 points for your um, content marks. Okay. Are you ready to write at least the top and the bottom part of the letter? Can we try to do this together? Okay, let me minimize this. Hang on. Inilah payah menggunakan teknologi. I need to readjust things. Okay. Question on my left. Hang on, hang on, hang on. And then I'll have the... This on my right. Okay, can you see the screen now? First and foremost, what should be written at the topmost of the letter? Apa yang perlu ditulis atas sekali surat tu? The name, the, the, name of the, the name of the sender. Okay, whose name should I write? Kita letak nama Siti Nohaliza lah. Stewart. Eh? Okay, Stewart. Okay, what's your full name, Stewart? Stewart Ali. Stewart apa? Yes, Stewart. Okay, but usually people have um, their last or surname. Let me um, let me give you my favorite <coughs> actor's last name, Bradley Cooper. So you are Stewart Cooper. So assuming that Stewart is from which state do we want to to give Stewart? Now we are after the name. What should be written next? Kita tulis apa selepas nama? And the address. The address. Okay. Let assume Stewart is from Terengganu lah. Okay. I'll just give a, an address to Stewart. Number. My favorite number is seven. Number seven. Jalan Telaga Tiga. Taman Perigi. Um, postcode, apa ya? Mm -hmm, 60,000, 69,000 Dungun Terengganu Sibus postcode <laughs> Oh, that's Sibus postcode, that's okay Okay, selepas so alamat penerima Kena tulis apa? Um, horizontal line 
Yep, the horizontal, horizontal line. line. Excellent. So I'm making a horizontal line here. Then the Next. receiver. Yep. Receiver okay. Name. Do you do you know the name of your district council officer? No. Do you logically know? No. Okay. Then. No. We just need to address the position, the highest position if, if possible. What's the highest position in the district council? The chairman. Okay, Ken, the chairman. So, Stewart is in Dungun. District council in Dungun would be uh, Majlis Perbandaran Dungun. Let's just assume that. Majlis Perbandaran Dungun. Let's just give a made up address. Um, Bangunan Sultan Mizan, um, 69,000. Eh, tak ada nama jalan. Jalan um, Sultan Mizan, 69,000. Dungun. And don't forget to underline the last the last um, part of the address. Terung Ganu. You can write lah kalau you nak tulis panjang Terung Ganu Darul Iman pun boleh. Okay, next. What is the next? Uh, the date. The date. Where do you write the date at? <coughs> at the right. the right hand side. Yep. To get um parallel with the last part of the address. What's today's date? Today is 14 April. 14. Okay. 14 April 2020. Oops. Okay. Alright, after the date, what do you write? Um, the salutation? salutation. Do you know the gender of this chairman? No. No. Mm. So what do you write? Dear sir and madam. Sir, yes. Dear sir or madam. Next. The title. The title. Suggest to me the title of this letter. Hey, I forgot to see the chat. Is anyone typing at the chat section? No. No, I guess. Okay. So, suggest to me a title that is suitable. And remember, this is a letter of complaint. But the word complaint is um, not necessarily, does not necessarily have to be in the title. Condition in neighborhood. Conditions. The description. Conditions in neighborhood is good, but there are better or more specific Title than that. Okay. Apa lagi? Kalau you cakap conditions je, it could be a positive condition or a good condition, right? Yeah. So what should it be? Environment. Sorry? Environment. Environment. Uh, uh, condition in a Poor room. condition. Someone write poor condition. Very good. I'll take the answer. Um, the uh, poor conditions poor conditions of what neighborhood um you can be specific because you already know where you live right you must remember this majlis perbandaran they will receive hundreds and thousands of complaints every day if you just write poor conditions of Mm, the neighborhood. So they would be like, um, macam menyusahkan dia lah. Dia nak tengok neighborhood in which area. So be specific. So you now live in Taman Perigi. Poor conditions of Taman Perigi. This is what you should do also. So be very specific with your intention, your purpose in your title. Okay. Poor conditions ataupun poor neighborhood conditions of Taman. Poor neighborhood conditions in Taman Perigi. Okay, are we okay with this title? Next, the first paragraph without the number. Apa yang you tulis or what have you learned? What did your teacher teach you to write in the first paragraph? Introduction about ourselves. Okay, I would usually start with the above matter is referred to. Okay, sorry, referred to. So you reintroduce yourself. I am Stuart Bradley. Who are you? Are you representing any organization? Teacher Stuart Cooper. Hey, Stuart. Sorry. Ah, oh, lah, Bradley too is the. <laughs> okay, are you representing any um any organization? 
No, right. So, who are you? Who is this Stuart Cooper? Resident the of resident. Taman Perigi. Yes, a resident of Taman Perigi. Okay. So, we can end the sentence here. Now, you can state your purpose, the purpose of why you are writing this letter. How do you start your sentence? The aim of I wrote. Mm, let me fix that a bit. The purpose, the purpose of, of this letter is, is to complain. Very good. Is to complain about the poor. The con yep. You you repeat the title. The poor neighborhood conditions. Neighborhood conditions in, in Taman Perigi. Taman Perigi. Is this all? Do you want to read some more? Are this enough for us? This is enough, okay? All right. So, kita buat, we don't have to finish all because time is running out. We'll just finish rubbish dump along the roadside. Sampah dibuang di tepi jalan. Let's just do this and then we'll uh, finish the letter. Okay, how do you start with the first complaint on sampah dibuang di tepi jalan? How do you start the sentence? You can start it the easiest way by using um, sequence connectors. Firstly, I first can. And foremost. Yes, first and foremost, I'll take that. First and foremost, we can see rubbish being dumped along Bronze, the roadside. roadside in our neighborhood okay how do you make this longer or how do you elaborate this point macam you nak panjangkan lagi about the effect of the rubbish jumping along the road side I like that you buggy cause and effect. So what are the effects of rubbish being dumped along the roadside? Uh, apa, apakah effectnya? No one is writing in the chat. A lot of insects fly, okay. which um, can cause diseases. Okay, this situation uh, or this causes um, leaks. This causes a lot of insects to what? Okay, someone's typing. Teacher, how long do we have to elaborate a point? Uh, there is no word limit for question one. So you can just add one more point and that's okay. Or you can write as long as you want, as long as you, um, you utilize the 45 minutes given, okay? Unlike question two, where you have to write, I don't know, there's no, no, uh, yeah, paper question two, there is a word limit. You need to write a minimum of 350 words. So question one here does not have any word limit, meaning that you can write as short as you want and as long as you want. Yes, you can add any idiom as long as it is used correctly. Okay, cepat kita tambah satu point je and then kita nak tulis penutup dia. What do you write? This causes a lot of insects to Cepat-cepat, anyone? This is supposed to be your essay. I'm just typing it for you. Ataupun this causes apa? Can I speak in Malay? Yep, yep, can. Ini menyebabkan haiwan bawaan penyakit dapat membiak mendapat membiak dengan jadi tempat-tempat Bahan dia, ah, uh, uh, like okay. mosquitoes. Okay, good. Um, uh, stray dogs pun boleh. Tapi Anna, stray dogs is point number number one, two, three, four. So it's best that we keep stray dogs for point number four later. Oh, sorry. And no, no, Faris, you are correct. This I I'm talking to Anna because she she suggested to talk about stray dogs. This causes um insects. Like. To breed insects like mosquitoes. Eh, macam mana je mosquitoes ah? Mosquitoes to breed and would resort 
to um, infectious um, diseases to spreading in the area. Ha, bolehlah ni. Jadi, ini menyebabkan serangga seperti nyamuk untuk membiak dan menyebabkan penyakit berjangkit um, tersebar di kawasan kita. Mosquitoes. Yep, yep, you are correct. Okay, so assuming that you write number three with other points, semua, 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 until number six lah katakan ya. This one are all your points. How do you end the letter? What is, what should be in the final paragraph of your letter? Of a hope. Yes, you hope. What do you hope from the, this is a complaint, remember? You kena bertegas sikit. You must be very strict in your, uh, in your essay, uh, in your letter. How do you sound... Quite strict, but still polite. They will take an effective action on it. I love that. Okay, so um, I hope that the town council or the district council will take an uh, immediate and effective, e effective action on this matter. Okay. Some more? You ada harapan lain? It is highly appreciated if the town council will take... Okay, I'll, I'll take... I, I use your sentence lah. It is... Okay, sorry. It is highly appreciated if the town council will take an immediate action Okay, about my complaint. Very good. Sama ni je. Satu ayat je. Satu ayat pun boleh actually. But if you want to add another point pun boleh. Ataupun another sentence. What would be another point? Ataupun, ataupun another sentence. This is to ensure that we will live harmoniously. Okay, I'll take that. This is to Very ensure good. that we live, tak payah will, that we live harmoniously. Harmoniously. Together. Okay. That's good. All right. And then you say thank you. Always end a letter, a speech with a thank you note. And what should be at the bottom of your letter? Signature. Yours faithfully first, the complimentary closure. Yours, remember with the letter S, yours faithfully. And then your signature. signature. Who's the writer here? I forgot. Oh, you were. Stuart Cooper. Kejap, saya nak kecikkan the remove space. Remove space. Okay, so we have Stuart here. The signature. Stuart. Okay, kawan -kawan -kawan saya na, ya. Let me change. Okay, and then Stewart Cooper. Since um, Stewart is not uh, does not have any position, does not uh, does not hold any position in any organization in this letter, you can just end there, or you can also write resident of Taman Perigi Dungun. Are we allowed to combine the content? Yes, you are. The examiner will just um, go through. Um, thoroughly, macam dia akan screen your essay and cari all the 12 points if ada and then you dah selamat dah markah dekat the 12 points then only um, they will read again to assess your language. You can combine two points in one sentence or you can combine two to three points in one paragraph it's entirely up to your creativity. If for example you think that paragraph two here is too short you can add another point here it's up to you. Okay, so How this much is, paragraph of this um, There is no nature. specific number of, there is no specific number of paragraphing for paragraph four, question one. Below indicate of what? Ni ke? Ni ta, ni sebenarnya sebab nak tunjukkan ada tanda tangan tu, kalau tak ada, tak, tak ada titik pun tak apa, you just sign. The dot 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 here ni kan, you just ignore it. Or you don't have to write the dot 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 in your essay. Cuma dalam surat ni kan dia tak ada garis. So I need to write the dot dot dot. 
Okay, any question? You can shoot your question in the chat section. Do you find the session today um, beneficial for you? Is it helpful? Yes, sir. absolutely correct. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely you. correct. Okay, so sure. look at your right hand side here. This is the full letter that we wrote just now. From Stuart Cooper until resident of Taman Perigi Duan here. Okay. Now, now I, um, idiom for first letter, uh, first, how to say, idiom is not a requirement for the first question, but if you know uh, idiom or proverb or statistic or question or anything along the line, you can put in. It's not a necessity to put an idiom in question one. Okay. All right. That is all. Any question? Do you want me to leave you with a homework? Because I am a homework giver lover. But if you... Um, no. No. <laughs> no. Okay, then I will just leave you with um, a quiz. You remember yesterday I left you with a quiz? Ensure that we are writing online. Uh, teacher, do you have some tips to ensure we are writing? Oh, okay. Um, I have this tip for yeah i do i do this is how you 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 actually plan for your um for your essay sekejap ya mana eh you must always have a timer bila you buat latihan dekat rumah say you buat latihan uh, question one you always have a timer with you eh dah dah 39 minit saya dah terlajak masa if you have other class you are all you are um allowed to leave the session Okay, can you see the screen now? Okay, this is the overview. Here's the timing. Hang on. Jaya. Um. And we can. Okay, can you continue see? Continue our lesson. I am planning to have another session like this on Thursday. Is it okay? Yeah. Sure. Everything. Can you mention it again on Telegram group? Okay, um, is the timing okay 2 p.m. or do you prefer to have it in the morning? No, morning need to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, it's just that it's quite risky to have a class at 2 like this because sometimes it rains quite heavily here in Sha'alam in the evening. So when it rains, the line yes. doesn't really I prefer stable. night. You prefer at yeah. night? Cannot, yeah, cannot. At night, I have class. Okay, uh, for the time being, let's just stick at 2 o'clock. Can we? Okay. Sure. And then we experiment. You mention it again. Okay, I, can, I will. So we'll, yeah, experiment, we'll experiment having classes at night or in the evening or morning. Okay? Because after all, you still need to go to school at 7.30 daily, right? If, we are, if, if school is still on. <laughs> You're okay? fresh. So I would suggest two o'clock. Kalau three o'clock tu macam dah too draining. At least at two o'clock tu you macam baru ambil lunch. You are still fresh, sedikit kot. Yeah, right? teacher. Morning means what time? Ma? Morning. <laughs> okay, I'm really putting you into um, a situation which you don't like. Um, probably nine o'clock because I usually have my USR class at ten. But that's oh okay. Let's God. just let's just stick at two. I'll, I'm usually free at 2. So, as for now, let's have our class at 2 o'clock on Thursday. That's our deal as of now. 2 o'clock on Thursday. I am planning to do speech writing on Thursday. Okay. 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 So, oh, tadi siapa yang tanya? Amalin tanya kan? How do we ensure we write on time? When you do your exercise, you always time yourself tau. This is what I told every student, even Muat, because I teach Muat, Muat, uh, PT3 semua. You mesti ada timer dekat sebelah, even if you do your exercise um, by yourself at home. Um, the first 10 minutes should be allocated for your planning or structuring. And you only write in 30 minutes. Katakanlah you plan to write five paragraphs. Okay. So every paragraph should be written in six minutes because 30 bahagi lima jadi enam. And then you spare another five minutes to do rechecking or correcting your essay. 
Okay, always, always because nowadays all students ada phone kan. Zaman saya dulu tak ada telefon masa nak buat latihan. Jadi, uh, always have your phone next to you and set your timer. Jadi, the first 10 minutes tu, you time for planning contohnya. But I don't think Teacher, planning, yep. Can I ask you other question on the Telegram group? Okay, yep. But let me finish this. Uh. So, when you plan, I don't think you would spend 10 minutes for planning for question 1. Jadi, probably you can spend um, 5 minutes here. And then, uh, you bagilah, uh, you start timer, 6 minutes. When you start writing your first paragraph tu, 6 minutes. Kalau timer you dah bunyi, tit, 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 after, but you still haven't finished writing your first paragraph, then that means you still need to work on your writing, your timing. You understand, Amalin? You mesti kena ada timer. Whenever you do all exercises, not only essay, even math, science, semua, you must have a timer next to you. So that this will actually uh, train you to answer on time in exam. Okay. Okay. So I think that is all. Dah tinggal 17 orang dah. Semua dah keluar. I hope to see you on Thursday, 2 o'clock. Uh, have lunch first. And we'll do speech writing, inshallah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, teacher. And, all right. Have a wonderful evening. Assalamualaikum.